anyway. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mrs. Taylor, for those kind words. Uh, and, and thank you to the faculty for bringing us on this journey. And then uh, thank you to our families and parents, without whom we wouldn't be here today. That wasn't a speech yet, though. <laughs> now, uh, before I begin my speech, I, I would like to introduce the idea that uh, while it's the valedictorian's duty to give the valediction or goodbye, it's the graduate uh, to the graduating class. It's the job of the salutatorian to give the salutation or greeting. Hello. <laughs> my name is Justin Ellis, and I am your salutatorian. <laughs> Now, it's a nice feeling saying hello. Uh, I believe we should say hello to everything. To every fresh experience, hello. To every uh, uh, impossible challenge, hello. To every person who wanders into our lives or who we wander into the lives of, depending on your perspective, hello. Now, today we're saying goodbye to a lot, but we're saying hello to so much more. We're saying goodbye to dancing in silly costumes on Halloween. We're saying goodbye to awards assemblies. We're saying goodbye to assemblies where New York cops yelled at us about our life decisions. Uh, but also to those assemblies where we got treated to a heartfelt and honest tale, and that might stick with us for a long time. And also to that one where we got to pet dogs. That was my favorite. <laughs> now, we're saying goodbye to the Rye vs. Harrison pep rally and we're saying goodbye to the other two pep rallies that tried their hardest to be the Rye vs. Harrison pep rally. <laughs> Overall, we're saying goodbye to the past, to that fluffy feather bed of nostalgia we'll no doubt fall back on in times of reminiscence. And we're saying hello to the future. The future is limitless. We can't see where it ends, so it may feel as if we're waving, waving hello into a dark and uncaring void. Man to universe, I'm here. Universe to man, I don't care. <laughs> but let's not think of the future as some bottomless pit we're constantly falling into. No, from my experience, a positive outlook on things corresponds to finding a, a suitably inspiring analogy. So, think of the future as a gigantic being we're opening our doors to and letting into our lives. No, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> Instead, let's think of the future as an enormous warehouse that we're just about to step into, finding a world of opportunity and also emptiness and confusion and what am I doing here in this warehouse? What's the purpose of it all? All right. There isn't really a suitable analogy for the future because we don't know the future. We can't know it. We're too young. And I'm glad we don't. It's that unexpected nature of life that makes every new experience a treat. Because if life is a box of chocolates, then I don't want to know the ratio of raspberry nougat to butterscotch square before I open it. If life is a highway, then I don't want to ride it all night long. There are some pretty incredible stops along the way. Because if life is an adventure, there's no way I'm following a map on a straight line from A to B. Imagine if Columbus actually knew where India was and decided to turn around. <laughs> Imagine Marco Polo if he had had before him a spreadsheet detailing exactly how long his voyage would take, exactly where it would take him, a list of every wonder he'd encounter, every exotic beast he'd battle, every person who would enrich his life. Would he have even gone? We're firing off towards a new world just like every Polo, every Columbus, every Da Gama or Batuta, every explorer throughout history. And where would the thrill be for us if we could not, like hapless pilgrims, set off into a starry black yonder in search of that world, hoping, but never knowing what that world would be? This may sound risky. It is risky. We'll be more vulnerable than we've ever been. But the writer John Augustus Shedd put it best. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Of course, we're going to pack our bags with the right supplies, a sack of optimism on our backs, a, a mule saddled with aspirations. We're going to set our course to the stars that shine the brightest for us, our career, family, charity. But I would be surprised if not one of us here experiences something unexpected, 
that completely reshapes that course. That's the beauty of it, really. The fact that nothing will go exactly as planned. Because our plans and our dreams are nothing compared to what's really out there. Some of us here today have spent the first 18 years of our lives here. Some of us have spent 12 years growing up in this school district and looking forward to this exact day. As a, as a first grader, that number at the end of LSJ.15 <laughs> seemed like an eternity away. It was the abstract and impossibly distant future. Yet now the future is here. First grade me would be ecstatic. First grade me would have dropped the microphone, grabbed his diploma, and made a beeline for the woods. <laughs> but 12th grade me would rather savor, savor uh, this graduation. <laughs> One last huzzah with my fellow explorers before we part our ways. Because I'm gonna miss you people. I'm gonna miss the teachers who have mentored me and the friends who I am so proud to say I've known. And the time for goodbye comes later. For now, let's say hello. Let's remember the milestones along the way that have equipped us for the path ahead. As I look back on 12 years growing up with this incredible and crazy group of people, I, I feel prepared for whatever the future has to throw at me. Out there we'll find disappointment, we'll find accomplishment just like here, we'll find love, we'll find excitement, we'll find friends who will stop at nothing to make our lives more interesting. And maybe, just maybe, we'll find people who can have as much fun as we do on the prom dance floor. <laughs> I, for one, am ready to be surprised. Without a doubt in my mind, when Marco Polo first stepped out of his cozy Italian home into the clear summer air with a pack of food on his back, and an unfinished map in his hands while he was prepared for the journey. He was not prepared for every trial, every city, every person who would come his way. But he stared out across the Mediterranean with a smile. Goodbye, home, I like to imagine, he said, as he gestured to the horizon, and hello.